Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania 2. Um, I think I may have wasted too much time in town. Hey, it's our old friend Skeleton Snake Dragon Heads. I love these guys. But yeah, I may, um... I may unfortunately have wasted too much time in town, and I might not be able to reach the next one in enough time so that I can buy the thing. Because, yeah, it's already 11. Pardon me, Blobs. Thank you for the damage boost, though. Bro. Okay, okay. We're doing good. It's noon. One of you is going to have a Morning Star. Yes, as I mentioned last time... Actually, can we do this? What in God's name is happening? Buy some of my laurels? Yes, I did need one laurel. Or one order of laurels. I think you get two. Okay. I needed four, specifically. What a weird... What a weird thing to hide behind two of those. Now, luckily, as we mentioned, time does not pass while indoors, so... Oh, man. Can you imagine if this game got a remake? Castlevania 1 has been remade, like, four or five times by now. It would be kind of awesome to see this game clean, you know? I don't think jumping is faster, just as it wasn't faster in the original Castlevania. But I'm... Oh, God. Oh, no. Trying to bunny hop all the way to victory. Yep, okay, nothing. If... Oh, God. If it so happens that it's a horrible night to have a curse, I'll cut that part out. Take my daughter, please. That is an old joke, sir. Do you have it? Oh, I think this is it. Got 206 money. 206 hearts. Right, I've got laurels. Tell me you've got the morning star. <gasps> yeah! All right. Look at that thing, it's got a little thing on the end. So yeah, I mentioned that a Morning Star is just a spiked mace, as opposed to a flanged mace or a standard one, or a club. Clubs and bats, of course, can be made of metal, but, you know. Um, but yeah, the interesting thing about the uh, Castlevania Vampire Killer and Morning Star is that it's really a... It's really a flail. All right, I'm going to I'm going to be right back, man. Check the guy. All right. Coming up is possibly one of the hardest challenges in this game. Not that guy. Or that guy. What a horrible lot to have a curse by the way. Like we got this new Chang whip. So we'll be good to go. Can I help you, ghouls? Ooh, I want that heart, though. So, um, this was made famous in the Angry Video Game Nerd. Hup. I'm really hoping. Nice. All right. Oh, crap. I don't know what that said. Anyway. So this is one of the most legendary things in the game. You just have to know that you must equip a red crystal and kneel here. Until that shows up. Um, the only way you're actually allowed to know this is because somebody in one of the villages will say, Hit your head on Deborah Cliff. 
and you're just kind of expected to know that that is Deborah Cliff. Um, sure, man. Yeah, look at the range of the Morningstar, the reach. I feel like the reason that this thing is called the Morningstar, despite the fact that it actually isn't a Morningstar, it's a flail. It's a weird flail whip thing, but yeah, the reason it's called the Morningstar is probably because it's like the sun, you know? Morning. Ooh, we got blobs. We got blobs, though. Pardon me. Thank you. Those blobs are just so glitchy, man. <laughs> that is just offensive. Be it. You're just kind of supposed to know that that specific rock is Deborah Cliff. It's at one side of the game world, and it's not like there's other rocks. You know, other big mountains. But it's just kind of one of the things about this game that people don't like. Where you just kind of have to know that that's Deborah Cliff, and by hit your head on it, they mean kneel in front of it. You know, because that kind of looks like you're hitting your head on it, I guess. Oh god. See, if I can actually level up, it'll it'll refill my health. Well. Durr. And I had so much money. That said, I got the most important things, which were laurels and the morning star. I've got four laurels and I've still got a garlic left, so I didn't need to buy that other guy's garlic. You know, they get a lot of use out of those hanging skeleton images. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with them on that. That's a it's a it's a cool, eerie looking image that really helps establish this game's tone, you know? Because something about um, Castlevania 1 is that Castlevania 1 is built to be a homage to classic horror movies. That's why there's those little white bars along the top of the screen. They're meant to be the spoke holes for film strips. You know, like an old movie projector. Uh, pardon me, sir. One of the big old, like, projector projectors where the movie is actually projected and, like, you know, it's a whole thing. Uh, pardon me, sir. Although he fortunately helped me out there. This is something I kind of like. Um, it looks like I've glitched into the world outside of the world, but... Invest in an oak steak? Yeah, imagine if, if games like this had more of a chance. I think this game is cool. I admit that it has probably more problems than any mainline release for the NES, you know? And I realize that that is a possibly gratuitous thing to say. Like, there are some games like, what was it, Top Gun has the impossible, like, thing where you have to land the plane with the special Wii glove, the power glove. I wanted a power glove when I was a kid, I thought that they were cool. They're not, but they look cool. They trick people into thinking that you're cool. And really, isn't that childhood? Alright, how do I get back there? Because normally the thing that I fell through is meant to be a shortcut so you can get to the thing better. Also, on one of the guides I'm using, you actually pass by the oak steak guy um, from dungeon, the last dungeon that we were in, the last mansion. And you have the opportunity to buy a second oak steak and they recommend you do that because then you'll come here with an oak steak and you can just go straight there. Which is interesting, I like that, but... Um, I didn't know, so I didn't. 
Yeah, this is the piece of Dracula here, but we can't actually get it. But yeah, of all of the games on the NES, I think that this is possibly the most flawed of them. The most flawed in that it's not a bad game. It's just a good game with a lot of problems. Because I would say that there are way more games on the NES that are just bad. Whereas this one is like, cool, but just, eh, you know. Like, if you were to look at Mega Man 1, there are a few things in Mega Man 1 that are just borked. But that's fine. Yeah, I knew it. Um, you know, no one's out here shedding a tear for Mega Man 1. People usually know that Mega Man 2 is where it's at. But with this... Well, with Mega Man 1, like, there's just a couple of things that are just weird. Like, the score system that Mega Man 1 has. Only in Mega Man 1, not in other Mega Man games. And I feel like the only reason it's in there is because of editorial mandate. Because it was just a thing that games did. And Capcom was like, hey, put it in. Just because. Um, and it's rather telling that it's not in any of the Mega Man 1 remakes. And it's not in Mega Man 2. So even when going back, they're like, no, Mega Man does not need score. Oops. Now would not be a good time to screw this up. Oh, right. Up, up, up there. Pardon me, Mr. Skelton. I love this guy's color scheme. The brown makes him look like he's still got a little bit of flesh on him, you know? A little bit of meat on those bones. Which is interesting and spooky. I will also say, the leaps of faith... Nah, man. No way. And by the way, in case you were needing a reminder of how the leveling system works... Every single heart item you pick up also gives you XP. So every heart item gives you money... and ammo. And XP. However much XP you get from the item is the item's value in money minus one, I think. So a five will give you four XP. A two will give you one XP. Ten will give you nine. What that really translates to is that you're going to just have less XP than money. In, in almost all cases. Barring certain instances where... There we go. Hup. You've recently bought something. Pardon me for the holy water noise. Invest in an oak stake. And then we drop... So again, um, for those who need a refresher, time does not pass in mansions. It is day four, hour 21, 10 minutes in. Time passes rather quickly in this game, but it is still day four, 21, 10. Oh, look at the chug. There's too many guys on screen. You gotta get off screen, guys. That's another thing about this game that is just straight up not good. You really have to struggle through the screen tearing at times. Not screen tearing. Um, you now possess Dracula's nail. Just one fingernail, I guess. Kind of weird, you know? Uh, let's put the shell on. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, kind of weird that, like, 
Like look at the look at the body parts we have. We have a rib, which is represented by a femur, a heart, that makes sense. An eyeball also makes sense. If you think about like the corpse parts, you know, eyes have a lot of meaning. Fingernail. Or toenail. I don't know which one is grosser and or funnier. But yeah, like imagine if we put Dracula back together and he's like Like he's he's just one heart with one rib around it, and on top of that is an eyeball, and then stuck to one of the ribs is a nail. Just a little strange. But like I said, my headcanon is that Simon actually has been working on putting Dracula back together in the years before this game. Simon Belmont is nothing if not thorough, and I can only imagine that... I think it's been four years between these two games? That Simon is... has been working on reconstructing Dracula, and these are just the last few pieces. Alright, let me just check where I'm heading next. All right, yeah, I'm doing well. Um, so, don't have a lot of health, but that's okay. So, I have the crystal equipped, right? There we go. So yeah, same deal. At this point, you see a thing and you can kind of faintly see the blocks underneath. Oh boy. You can kind of faintly see the blocks underneath. It makes sense. By now, it's been established. I don't think if a game is going to do a weird swerve like that, it doesn't really matter if the swerve happens a second time. Because, like, you've already seen it. Oh, right, it's night. Those guys take double damage. <laughs> oh, it's Skullman's. Pardon me, sirs. Ooh, that slow down. See, there's something interesting about this. Oh! I was mashing the whip to button whip button to attack them. I'll give your morning star power to burn away evil. Yeah, look at that! This thing is so cool. That's the flame whip. It's just another damage boost for the morning star. But now this is the best weapon. It's just the best. I love the look of the flame whip. I think it's so cool. Like, look at that thing. Pizzazz. Look at that. That's clean as hell. I notice the game seems to chug a little bit. Also, I like that it only catches on fire when it, it is in mid-swing. And you can see that that guy goes down in easier hits. Unless hits. Um, so, yeah, we're coming up right on the end. So, I'm going to just check my walkthrough again. All right, I just checked. I think I'm on pace to beat the game. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> oh God. Oh my God, the slowdown. <laughs> the slowdown though, it's for real. So one thing that I kind of don't like is that you don't really get a chance to play with the flame whip once you get it. So also, if you go up here, there's a whole level up here. It's a complicated maze of platforms and things. However, there is nothing at the end of it. There isn't a reward up there. I I just uh, checked the walkthrough to see what the purpose of that area is. Uh, it isn't one. So yeah, it's kind of weird. Who cares? The morning sun has vanquished the horrible night. I would love more games where night equals just bad things coming out. Okay, day five, six in the morning. Oh crap. Those those skullsmen were rushing me. Okay, that one was my fault. Okay. So I like this. This is a very simple platformer. Um, you know, in like a... For example, like a Mario Brothers or a Sonic. 
platforming is the primary game mechanic, and so platforming is the main source of difficulty. It's much less of a part of Castlevania, even in the first game. So this is another thing people don't like. There is no way through this besides taking damage. So, you just have to use laurels. We've mentioned, we've already seen something like this, but this is another one. And yeah, you can see that it's probably impossible to get through here without laurels, so you kind of just have to. But yeah, I think this is the last mansion. There were some cool enemies out there, but one thing that I'm also noticing about the mansion this time, it's always just Skullmans, the bone-throwing Skullmans, the guys who have, um, uh, lordy help me. The, the Trident, okay, so all you have is the Tridentman, the Sword and Shield Skeletons, the Bone-Throwing Skeletons, Blobs. Oops. Hope I didn't need that. Um, Blobs and... Uh, the Weird Little Gargoyleman. Those are the only things in the mansions. And like... There was a cool guy made out of fire outside, and he shot a fireball that went up and then snaked along the ground, almost like a firework. And that's an interesting enemy, with some cool implications of how to fight it, especially when you have a weapon of such a long range. Because with Link, you can poke, um, essentially like one tile in front of you. Your reach is about the length of your sprite, plus one. Like, at any time, Link will only be able to hit one, like, sprite's worth in front of him. He does not have a long range. But with Simon, look at how many blocks I stretch across, see? My sprite takes up one of these blocks, and I stretch to the fourth block from where I'm swinging. Um, which is also the case in other Castlevanias. That was a pro jump. I just want to talk about how cool that is. Um, and some games have even longer ranges for the whip. So it's cool to have a character who is, like, slow, sluggish, but they've got quite an ability to aim and hit things away from them. And so fighting that, you either have really strong guys who are really tough, or weak guys with projectiles, and you make them work together in strange, interesting, and difficult ways. And that's cool. It's one reason why Castlevania works so well, because giving a hero a spear has been done a lot of, or giving a hero a sword, rather, has been done a lot of times. But giving them a spear is a lot rare. Invest in an Oak stake? So Oak stakes, if used on things not uh, Dracula's body parts, if used on regular enemies or bosses, I believe it either kills them in one hit or does just a whole bunch of damage. Well, goodbye. So I kind of... I've been attempting to play Castlevania in order of release. Um, barring games that are like Castlevania, like um, Rogue Legacy or... Bloodstained. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's cool. You can hit both of them. I like that. Nice. That feels good. Oh, yeah, there's a spider. That's new. I was getting so sick of trying to kill him like that, and then I just was like, no, we'll just do it like this. But hey, at least that guy's dead. So coming up, this is Carmilla. Well known from Castlevania Season 2, and she's also the villain of Circle of the Moon. There we go. Uh, here she's a weird mask. Carmilla's design in Circle of the Moon is amazing. She's initially like a cool red-headed vampire queen lady. 
uh, and then turns into a giant nude vampire woman riding a giant skull. Like, she's already larger than um, any human. Also, she's crying tears of fire and potentially blood. Like bloody tears, like a Dracula. But yeah, very simple boss fight. I do want to kill her, though, just because. But it's kind of weird considering how important and, like, crucial and interesting of a character Car Carmilla is, and her introduction here is just that she's a bloody mask. That's bloody as in covered in blood. You can't tell because of the graphics, but... I mean, she's a vampire. The implication is clear. Look at that. You now possess the magic cross. So normally that would be called combat cross, but here it is, of course. Magic cross. And I don't think we can select it. I don't know what that does. Anyway, let's go. You now possess Dracula's ring. Hey, for those of you who have seen Castlevania, Dracula's ring is very important. Um, it's his wedding ring, and it's the only thing left of him when he is staked and burnt to death by the cast. Oh boy. Um. Be yeah, interesting that even here they start to play with the idea that Dracula is still somewhat human and loves. Oh, hello. Who are you? I beg of you to take these laurels. Well, thank you. That's rather kind of you. Now, I don't know how to get out of here, but I guess that was probably just meant to be the reward for doing this mildly challenging platforming challenging challenge. Yep. Um, I guess we'll start working our way back up then. It is, of course, a classic uh, piece and choice of game design to just make the player have to backtrack. If ever, you know... If ever you need to just make more game, but there's not enough time in your dev cycle, which appears to have been the case for this in a lot of reasons, and in a lot of ways, just make them go through the level you already made. And it's one of the things that I also just don't like that much. Hey, at least now those spiders are off screen. Yep. There we go. God, I love the fire whip so much. I love... I love Castlevania, man. I almost wish I didn't love Castlevania and Metal Gear. Castlevania is possibly my favorite platforming series, and I know that like calling it just a platformer is a little broad. But I feel like it might be one of my favorite franchises up there with, like, Devil May Cry, Metal Gear, Doom. Maybe Dark Souls, but Dark Souls is mainstream now. So I don't like it as much. That's not the real reason I don't like Dark Souls as much. The fan base is miserable. But, anyway, I digress. You may notice that now our things up here have been filled up. Um, these are allegedly all the pieces to resurrect Dracula. So why don't we go do that next episode, which will be the last one. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.